Hello and welcome to Coffee with a Counsellor. My name's Mel Ashworth and I have the pleasure of having the company, rather, of Councillor Roger Bailey. Welcome to the set. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> now, which ward um, do you represent? Broad Oak and Uphill. Broad Oak and <clears throat> Uphill, so not far. And which party are you with? I'm with the Conservative Party. Right, OK, we'll just get that out well, of the way. Conservative Councillor. Yes, least, <laughs> yes. How long have you been a councillor? Uh, since May of this year, so... Is that the first time you've stood? Yes, first ah. time. And um, really since coming back to West Super Mayor, this is uh, the first time I've really got involved in politics. And because um, I've always been interested in it, but uh, I was introduced into canvassing for John Penrose mm -hmm. um, when he stood for election okay. and prior to that. And um, it's fantastic feeling to be empowered uh, to be part of the political process. Yes, absolutely. To feel your views are making a difference. Yes. So that sort of prompted you to stand for yourself. Yes, it did. Yeah, yes, absolutely. It did, it did. How did and, you find and I was that? Very, sorry, it was very privileged that I was asked to stand for Broad Oak and Uphill because yes. that's where I grew up. Really? Um, when I was uh, younger in uh, Uphill. So did so. you go to Broad Oak, Broad Oak School? Uh, I, no, I went to Uphill Primary School yeah. and then um, Uphill comprehensive school and um, but I left about four years I was, I was only about a four-year period but it was a wonderful time of my life yeah and I've always wanted to come back right and um, I was bereft because my father was in the fire brigade ah. so he moved jobs quite often and um, I was bereft when I had to leave uh, oh, uphill really? so I was yeah. delighted to come back and it's been wonderful since I've been back when did you where did you go when you moved? Um, South Somerset. We were um, right. based in... Uh, <coughs> Dad had various jobs in South Somerset. And yeah. I, obviously I've moved since then yes. quite a few times, but basically came back to Somerset, South Somerset mostly, and now I've come back really to my home. Yeah, <laughs> I think full it's circle. It's full circle. How long have you been back in Weston? Then? Uh, since 2004 when I first, right. first bought my house. Right, yeah. OK. And presumably you have family and... Yes, I've got two daughters. Um, one of my daughters was uh, living in West Supermare. Um, uh, she's moved out now, but um, you know, it's not far away. But yeah, uh, yeah. So that's one of the other reasons I wanted to come back. Yes. But as well, also, you move near your daughter, near your relations, and they move away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so these things happen. <laughs> so um, you went to Uphill, and you went to Uphill Comp. Yeah. And then did you go on to college or what no, happened then? No, um, I wanted to become an architect. All right. Goodness yes. knows why. And um, in between looking for a job as an architect, I uh, there was a, a job vacancy advertised in computing. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is when I was 20. And um, I've been in IT or computing ever since. Oh. I'm still in it. Okay. <laughs> still working. <laughs> Amazingly. Wow. So I was in computing very, very early. Yes. Uh, the computers were about as big as his room. Yes. I've I mean, heard. it's difficult to imagine, but they were huge and um, very, very complicated. But do you um, love it? Do you love working with them? I, I, it was, it's been a huge part of my life. Mm. Um, I've had a terrific career. I've been I think if you don't if you don't like things, you're never going to do them particularly well. No, to do things true. for over forty odd years, you've got to like them. But you know, computers and uh, computing has changed so much, mm, and uh, and I've designed systems, written systems, uh, implemented systems. I de I developed systems which are and applications that have been exported abroad and I've been running my own company since 1986. So, oh wow, yeah. fabulous. Yeah, so. Have you travelled abroad a lot? Uh, well since I, since I, you know, sort of um, only on a, only for myself as it were, not in a business right. sense. I, okay. I have done some uh, foreign travel mm. for uh, business, I went to Germany and so on, but um, mostly in the UK. Yeah, yeah. What sort of thing um, are you passionate about, you know? Whether in life or in, in local politics? I suppose it, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. I think uh, as you get older, your passions tend to lessen, I suppose. Fairness, I suppose. Mm. Um, I'm passionate about our country, about England, mm. and uh, about, um, uh, and about uh, West Supermare, and certainly about Uphill. But, I mean, I don't 
have overriding. I think I'm busy, I think really, that and really I think good. as an objective, I think is to try and live my. I suppose my passion is to try and live my life as full as I possibly can, yes. and to take whatever opportunities I've got. Yes. Because uh, one of the things I am very good at is I'm very determined. If I right. set my set self a set of objectives, yes. I like to try do uh, try Fulfill everything them. I can. I mean, I worked on one project where I worked for three years yeah. towards an objective. Uh, sometimes part time, sometimes full time. Yeah. So uh, you can bring that into local politics and keep yes. that a project. I mean, I, it's early you. days for me. I was because I said I haven't been a councillor since May, and I have been involved in. Um, people have emailed me and written to me, uh, so I have been involved in some um, projects, but some aspects of council work. Mm. Obviously, the town council, I haven't got overall. You know, it's very much, we're limited as to what um, aspects we can get involved in. Yeah, so you're um, very much learning still yeah, at this, very much this learning. stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. yes, yeah. yes. Interesting, though. It's always very interesting. And, yeah. And um, getting people to ask, uh, you know, sort of interacting with people. And uh, people do treat you with respect. So it's very, it's, it's very endearing, really, in that mm, sense. Mm. They expect you to know a lot, perhaps more than you do. Yes. Um, but it's obviously, we, we're in a place where we can find out information That's and we right. are, exactly. have the inside track to seek out what is going on absolutely and to affect it of course three people you'd invite to a dinner party <laughs> I thought you, I thought you'd ask that. um well who would you like to meet living certainly, or dead certainly i've always thought um winston churchill i would love to have met of course um when i was of an age when uh, I, I always had that desire. He was very, very old, but he's certainly an absolutely fascinating character. And Margaret Thatcher as well. Okay, that's two. <laughs> one more. <laughs> well, the other one who is absolutely fascinating is John Lennon. But uh, John Lennon, I, that's fine. Because I think if I had more time, at this dinner party, I'd, we can yeah. bring anyone back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I had more time, I'd be able to sort of come up with some alternatives. But those are those, good. That's yeah. good. Now, blue sky thinking. If you think without limits, what would you love to see for Western? I'd like to see more jobs, certainly. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see Junction 21 sorted out. Yeah, we all. <laughs> I think the difference, even the difference in Western Supermare in the front since I came back in 2004 has been enormous. And the amount of uh, activity that now takes place on the front is fantastic. Yes. Um, one, of my, one of the things I'm really quite passionate about is the water park, which I think has been a huge success. And it's fantastic to see it so busy. Wonderful. Um, but uh, I mean, blue sky, yes, really, I suppose that's, a, you know, it's mm. a, I suppose, looking back on the 60s, there were lots and lots of jobs. Nowadays, there are very few jobs. Mm. I would love if my grandchildren had those opportunities I had, of being able to have lots of different jobs to find out your niche in the world. And our final question is, how would you inspire young people to get involved in local politics, to believe they can make a difference? Well, hmm. <laughs> nothing Not like easy, easy question to nothing answer. Nothing like easy questions, no. But, um, All I can say is it's important that they do. It is important that young people feel part of the, part of the uh, governing process, that they can make a difference. To some extent, it's, only, it's up to them how they do it. I mean... Certainly, going looking back at the '60s, I mean, uh, there were people involved in um, protests. Or not that I was ever involved. I was never a, I always always conformed. <laughs> Whether that's good or bad, I always conformed. But at least people were involved. And now I'm poli in politics to be involved to to feel not to feel necessarily making a difference, but to feel that you're doing your bit, that you can justify your actions. Yeah. I think is important. Yes. So, I mean, today's society is so different to what it was when I was growing up. Absolutely. So, so different. Completely. Um, and, and you, you know, older people always say, well, it's not as good as when I was young. It isn't. In many ways, it isn't. But in some ways, it is better. Uh, but I just wish... In what way do you think it's better, just out of interest? You've got so many, I mean, communication, you've got so many different, I mean, the, the, the inventions that we've had in that time, the microwaves, the mobile phones, the cars are so much better. I mean, having said that, I bought my first car for £40 and my insurance was probably minimal. 
But um, so there are some ways that it's better, but whether society as a whole is better, I don't know. Certainly we were, when we were younger, certainly everybody was very smartly dressed. And people don't think of that nowadays. Do you think that makes a difference when you go to interviews? Oh, sure it does. Yeah, Yeah. psychologically it makes a difference to people, I think. To people personally. So if they smarten themselves up, they actually feel better about themselves. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Not that clothes have been. Interesting. Yeah. Not that clothes have been necessarily uh, something that. I mean, my father never bothered about his clothes at all. (laughs) Very English, you know, threw things on and (laughs) always went gardening in his best suit. (laughs) Mother used to tell him. (laughs) <laughs> a bit like that myself. <laughs> but uh, I do think it makes a difference. People take, certainly used, used to be that people used to take pride in their appearance. Because I think, basically, because they, they couldn't afford... Right, clothes were there, that's much more expensive. Yeah. You wanted to show off that you could afford these clothes. Right. Whereas now clothes are a lot less expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, so people perhaps don't value them. I don't know. But these things go into... Cycles down the go. Yes, they tend and, to. And um, hopefully the fashion will come back. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, Roger Bailey, it's been a pleasure okay. speaking to you. Thank you so much for coming in. Okay, Mel. And that's it from Coffee with the Counselor for today. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank well, you. I-